Hey everyone, that's my fuel, jet fuel, just kidding, it's a black tea. I like to drink a black tea, especially when I'm working. I know some people prefer coffee, but, well, I like to drink tea. Uh, today is a very nice day, and I was able to finish my uh, primary work earlier, and um, probably next couple of hours I will be able to spend with this amazing project and continue to work on the tail and specifically on the um, rudder assembly. As you remember last time we finished the page 6.2 and we completed all steps 1 through 6. Today the next step will be on page 6.3 and we're starting the step from the step 1. Basically what's ab what is it about is uh, assembly of the preliminary assembly of the rudder and, well, nothing special here, I uh, will just follow one by one. We should be assembling the skeleton first, and after that we should be adding the skin on it. Everything will be on clickers for now. Um, well, step one says deburr the edges of all remaining parts to prevent scratching during fitting. So basically that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with deburring, sanding, and uh, I will disassemble this part, which we assembled during the last uh, steps on page 2. Let's see how it's going to look like. A few words about what I'm doing right now. So I um, took all required parts for this step, basically, well, quite a few. Now I removed all the protective plastic from all parts and now I'm basically deburring all edges. First, I passed all those parts through my machine, basically deburring machine, like deburring wheel. It's, well, it's quite quick solution, but what I don't like is well, this thing, this deburring wheel machine, uh, table, mach uh, table um, machine, it has a regulated speed, but even at the slowest speed, it's still a little bit too fast. I'm using the soft 3M wheel, which is 7A, I guess, the, the rating, rate is 7A. And I'm still waiting from Aircraft Spruce my uh, uh, time. I have the 6 inches one, and I'm waiting for my, I guess, 2 inches one, which I can easily put on the... Uh, drill or even probably on the uh, on like on the uh, manual deburring machine like air machine I have that thing with 90 degrees angle that's probably gonna simplify the things so now I have to actually sand deburr each each like the whole parts and first thing I would like to say about the angles I read about it on the forums so uh, some specific parts some certain parts will be touching the skin right I mean mainly all parts will be touching your uh, like, like the skin of the rudder because some parts the skin will go around the uh, around the uh, part on some parts it will be touching also the forward or rear part of the um, uh, of your of your part what's important here it's important to sand and make those angles where actually the uh, your skin will have a curvature like the curve well it have to be like well they have to be rounded 
well-rounded. That's important part. And I uh, read this on the forums, I saw it on some other videos, so that's really important uh, part because it's true, if, we're not do, if we don't do that, what's gonna happen when we're gonna put our skin on it? We're probably gonna have some sharp edges on the skin, which we don't want, right? We want everything to be smooth and nice. So that's an important moment. Aside of that, uh, if you plan, I hope you plan to um, put the primer on all your parts, sand well, like prepare well all parts. Don't leave anything like to be as a mirror, because mirror means it's going to be hard to apply your uh, primer, despite you think maybe it's opposite, but in reality you have to sand it well. You have to prepare your surface very well for the primer, otherwise your primer will just fall off. So that's the second, th the second thing, and uh, as you can see I have a well, good amount of parts to work on, so I'm going to slowly move, move through those parts, and I'm still at the step one, which clearly see in the burr the edges of all remaining parts to prevent scratching during the fitting which I just said about and what I'm doing right now so I'm continuing my uh, my step and working on the preparation the burring and sanding and rounding well just getting my parts ready I'm almost almost done and by the way why I'm using the gloves well guys it's aluminum take a look at my hand <laughs> that's aluminum like there are two choices good soap hand soap or gloves and then you probably don't need much of hand soap anyway I'm almost done almost all my parts are now no longer shiny but sand it and made. So, let's hold my parts and um, now I will check each part separately to ensure that I did a good job. As soon as, is, as that is done, I will continue to the next step which wants us to clicker together all the parts of the vertical stabilizer skeleton. So that's the next what I'm planning to do and uh, it looks like I still have time today. Yeah, I still have time for that, so I will assemble the skeleton on Klekos and probably that's going to be it for today. And yeah, by the way, about my air compressor, that saga, well, it still haven't ended yet. And um, yeah, I have modified my old air compressor. I removed the damaged engine. If you watch my previous video, you know what I'm talking about. I uh, added the like extra tank technically to my uh, current uh, Mastercraft air compressor. It works, but from what I found, I have to use very short hose between those two. I'm now using like a really long hose, like I guess 30 feet hose, or even more 35 feet hose, which is wrong, really wrong. Why? Well, because it's a hose, right? So it's also like a, it's also like a soft tank, technically soft tank for the air. So it can expand, uh, and um, it's not good because um, the air has to actually flow flow really quick from one one tank and another tank to the instrument. And if I'm using the hose of like. 20 feet or 30 feet between my primary compressor and instrument and another let's say 30 feet or 20 feet whatever hose from my extra tank to that compressor that's totally wrong so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to source like probably most likely purchase at local store like Home Depot or Canadian Tire the um, short hose maybe 3 feet 2 feet 3 feet put two tanks together, like tank and the compressor with the tank together, and connect them. Another thing I found is that my old compressor, which tank I'm using right now as expan ex expansion tank, 
it's rated for 100, um, 105 or 110 psi, while my other compressor is 130 psi. It's a red line on the manometer, like on the instrument, right? On the on each uh, on each uh, tank, I have an instrument which shows me the pressure. So that is also not really good because, well, I guess that one can handle extra 10, 20 psi, but there is like the valve, automatic valve, which opens up as soon as pressure is higher. So that I probably have just to regulate on the main primary compressor just to regulate it. Well, let me proceed next to my uh, verification of each part I did and a skeleton. like a real airplane part it's a big big part look at it wow I just clicked it together and that's what I have that's exactly what I got well so now it's time to drill some 30 size holes to ensure that everything matches and well yeah that's the part I have now <laughs> nice I'm surprised it looks cool all right, we'll see how much time I have um, still have left for today. And uh, well, likely I will try to drill a holes if I have time. Otherwise, I'll do it next time when I come back to my shop to work. But well, today I'm really glad because now I can really see the part, how it will look like. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a big part. Perfect.
have a feeling that if I'm gonna just leave after the step two, like skeletal assembly, uh, I feel I'll feel like some, something is not finished because I just quickly took a look and the next step was exactly take the skin, remove that blue protective plastic from inner part. I must say it's a it's that paint still, you know, like it's, it's not easy to remove. I will see if I can add that piece of video from my other camera how I was removing it, but it's a it's a big pain to remove it actually it takes time. And when you're removing this blue plastic, just be careful. Don't rush. Just do it very slow because there's a chance that you can basically bend and damage the part. So just be careful, do it slowly, slowly, take your time and it will happen. After that I, s I put a skin all around the uh, stabilizer. Well, it took me also some time just to get used how to put a skin around because skin didn't want to be precise in holes at the beginning, but after some time I just figured it out and just did it. And look, that's horizontal stabilizer. Can you believe it? Wow, that's done. Now it is done. Of course, it's not completed, but at least pre-assembly on Clicos, and now at least I can feel it. Like I can feel it. I see how it looks. Wow, that that really gives me like a I don't know, like even more willing just to to work, work, and work because it's really nice. You know, like you you're feeling after you do a work, you do like you do your assembly, you do it step by step by step by step, and you. You see the result and you can actually hold it, you can feel it. So, well, for today that's it. And um, next step, well, again, much drilling, so oh, boring. <laughs> I will have to much drill all the holes. Anyway, that's the next step, that's part of the game. But so far, take a look. Not complete yet, without, actual, without the actual rudder part, but at least it's already almost there.